Phillips. You know, Gary, uh, there are some very famous people here, and, and the remarkable thing about this show is that you went back, or you try to recapture the glory days of ice capades and, and, and stuff like that. How, how did the audience react to this? The show is extremely successful, Bob. The, the overwhelming success. And because it was a very unique idea for us to bring together legends on ice. So, and Dick uh, Button took part Dick in that Button show. Was our master of ceremony. Who was your I even skated mentor? a cameo performance. Mm -hmm. um, we had skaters from the That's 1960s. When you were on crutches, right? That's right, Walker. <laughs> <laughs> um, 1960, all the way up through the current uh, world and Olympic champions, and it was very well received. And in fact, so that the show was asked to come to Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, and we played there for five weeks. Mm -hmm. So it was extremely successful in that. Is, is there still a chance for? a small business guy like you know to launch a show like that because it's tough you're up against disney and the corporations that run the ice show the answer to your question is no this was right. a very unique experience because um i'm very blessed that i'm very well connected in my world small world of ice skating i'm very well connected and i was able with help from my friends to pull together this coalition of um, of uh, engineers ice skaters performers, musicians, writers, songwriters, and Dick Buck. Well, let's stay optimistic, okay? Because, you know, these are tough economic times. And I think what you do for a living uh, that has this residual effect of, of family and recreation is going to stay there and, and be healthy and survive these tough times. Well, skating's never been bigger than it is. We have more coaches in America, over 6,000 registered coaches. We have over 220,000 registered skaters, not counting hockey. Yeah. Uh, we have more rinks than ever. It's bigger than ever, but it's the least popular public-wise on TV. So there's a problem. There's, there's a, a, a problem with the PR of ice skating in the world right now. Well, we're going to work on that PR. Yeah. But in the meantime, Gary, thanks so much for joining us. And you're watching LA Business Today. we ended on ice skating because we are skating into a new economy and the ice is thin. The question is, do we have the right edge? That's our program, but before we leave you, a final thought. When it was first reported that Washington Mutual Bank had collapsed, our 23-year-old daughter turned to me and said, you baby boomers really blew it for our generation. I was shaken. Was she right? Did we really make it harder for young people entering the job market, the most vulnerable in our workforce? In my generation's defense, we created the most dynamic economy in U.S. history, and yes, greed helped motivate our success, but so did hard work. And you know, those values are still around, which is another way of saying we can learn from our excesses and our mistakes, change our reckless ways, and keep going. You know, it's going to be a much different business world for our daughter, but hopefully a more reasoned one, if we believe in the future of Los Angeles, still predicted to be a trillion-dollar economy alongside Tokyo and New York City. So somewhere between Alan Greenspan's Age of Turbulence and author David Corton's The Great Turning from Empire to Earth Community, we'll discover our future and hopefully give our children the same prosperity our generation fought for and enjoyed. I'm Sharon Jimenez. And I'm Bob Jimenez. Thanks for watching.
So which ones are concerned? Two and five. Uh, okay. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ad hoc uh, committee for economic recovery and reinvestment. We're going to come to order uh, here in council chambers, and uh, we don't have a quorum, but I'd like to, nevertheless, um, on a communication from the chair, move items two and five, uh, since we have a packed agenda. So uh, can we just read in the record what, what those items are? Item one, um, Sorry, item two, two is a CEO and Department of Transportation reports relative to the acceptance of ARRA Transit Capital Grant Funds in the amount of $8,022,665 for the purchase of 17 compressed natural gas commuter express buses to replace existing diesel buses. Okay, I'll move the uh, CAO report on, on that. Item five as well. Item five um, is a CEO and community development agency reports relative to the acceptance and execution of a municipal financing district program grant under the state energy program from the California Energy Commission in the amount of four million six hundred and seventy six thousand five hundred thirteen dollars for the development and implementation of a citywide commercial retrofit MFDP. Okay. I will move that with the caveat the CAO report with the caveat obviously if we're modeling this after the county program to make sure that we uh, make it competitive. My understanding is the county program has such a, a high interest rate, it's more than what people can get in the commercial market right now. So I just want to ensure the success of that, but I'll go ahead and move the CAO report on that as well. And with that, let's move to item one. Good morning. Jim Clark, Director of Federal Relations in the Mayor's Office. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I wanted to give you a brief update on uh, what's happening with the ARA recovery funds. Uh, the federal government has pretty much obligated most all of, all of the $787 billion. There's about $2 billion left of funding. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, one sec. If I could ask folks to just keep their conversations to a minimum or to move them outside, I'm so, I apologize. And I know many people are here for the council meeting, but we do have a committee meeting right now. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Go ahead, please. The, to give you a breakdown, there was $288 billion uh, in tax benefits, and so far $162.7 billion has been paid out by the federal government. There was $224 billion in entitlements, $127 billion has been paid out there. And in the area that we're most concerned about, in the area of grants and loans, there was $275 billion, of which $102 billion, or about 37%, has been paid out. Department of Energy is particularly uh, concerned about making sure that money gets obligated from the uh, awardees for three of the programs that, uh, that they have. The Weatherization Assistance Program, which you um, passed at the last ad hoc and the, the council approved. The EECBG, which is uh, coming up before you, and uh, the State Energy Program, as well as the Commercial Retrofit. Uh, they're asking in these programs that they try to obligate obligate uh, up to 90% of the funds by the end of June, which is going to be very difficult for us to do, and to spend 50% of the money by September of, of, next, of this year. Um, there was only one grant uh, opportunity this uh, past week that was called, uh, actually it was yesterday, it was called Investing in Innovation. Um, it was a uh, program that's, that we weren't able to uh, directly apply for but could participate in. The purpose of the program was to expand the implementation of an investment in innovative and evidence-based practices, programs, and strategies that will bolster school achievement and effectiveness. Um, through the compact, which is uh, the um, which is our folks as, as well as LAUSD and United Way and the Chamber. Two applications, each of $5 million, were made. Uh, LAUSD is the lead on an application called Public School Choice, and the LA Chamber is the lead on um, an application that will uh, improve uh, LAUSD's data system. So we wait to hear on those. So the first year of ARA having passed, um, and most of that was spent on acquiring the funds. The next three years is going to be on how we spend the money, accounting for it, and the auditing of it. There are 32 separate federal agencies, each of which have been given large amounts of money for the purposes of auditing. And one of the concerns when I was back in Washington, D.C., was expressing ways in which we could standardize the audit uh, functions from these 32 agencies which will be descending upon us as well as the state of California. Uh, for that reason, I hope that uh, later on in today that uh, 
that this uh, committee will approve the CAO's report on the uh, use of management and administrative fees so that we can um, and the last thing I wanted to report to you is that we still have five grant awards uh, that we have not yet brought to you that are in the process of, of having the reports done and CAO reports done uh, that we'll be bringing to you. And, and that should pretty much close out the awards. And like I said, then we'll get into the uh, auditing and uh, counting and spending of the funds. Okay. That's my report. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Stacey Sosa, CAO. Um, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying that we've seen an increase in the amount of dollars awarded to the city. Um, we've seen an increase of $1.5 million, and that's primarily due to a recent award to the CRA for $240,000 for the convenience store conversion program, and $800,000. What does that do? What was that? What does the convenience store conversion program do? Um, this was a program uh, that was targeted about tobacco cessation. Okay, gotcha. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Okay. Oh, gotcha. And the second award was for the city attorney in the amount of $800,000. Both of those are sub-awards from the county's uh, Communities Putting Prevention to Work grant. Mm -hmm. Also, um, we had previously reported um, an award for for the Pathways Out of Poverty grant, mm -hmm. and it was as a zero dollar amount. We are recently informed that the city's allocation would be $910,000. Okay. Um, we are also received information that uh, CDD was denied their application for $500,000 for the nor Northeast San Fernando Valley Bridges to Success program. Um, we also report on project health performances. For the month of, month of March, we have new information. Um, a total of 476.15 jobs were created or retained in the month of March. And we also saw an increase in expenditures um, of $10.4 million, from $37.8 million to $48.2 million. Uh, we also saw an increase in reimbursements to the city of $110,000. So sorry. So we we've we've spent out total expenditures about a little under fifty million now. Of that. Correct. Okay. So just under fifty. Got it. For the month of March. Yeah. Um, and in terms of the uh, the report back from DWP on job creation and retention for the smart grid, did we give an update. We had requested that DWP be present today to report back directly to you on that matter. Okay. Can I, can I ask the department to come forward? Do you have more to add to your report? No, nope, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Stacey. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Gretchen Hardison, Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Um, I am, I understand, excuse me, yeah, I understand that you were looking at a, a report back for the jobs to be created from the Smart Grid Demonstration Grant Program. Right. I do have some draft numbers from a report that's being uh, prepared for the Board of Commissioners. Mm -hmm. So I'll present those to you today, but I'm happy to come back once those are uh, definite okay. uh, and a little more refined. At the moment, there's a range of jobs uh, positions that are uh, that the program team is looking at, um, and it's a rather large range between 50 and about 200 positions expected to be created. Um, in the first quarter OMB report, uh, it was reported that 12.7 jobs have already been created uh, from from this program. At the moment, the program team is getting the statements of ready. Uh, statements of work ready for a Department of Energy approval. And so as they go through that process, they'll be refining the scopes and the tasks and have a little better jobs estimate for mm -hmm. you. Okay. Um, I think there was, and, and of the 50 to 200 positions, how many of those are um, folks that are already employed by DWP? Um, and how many of them are, are folks that would be new, new, are those all new jobs? They are not only jobs. It's about one third retained and about two thirds created. New jobs expected. And um, are any of them outside the Department of Water and Power? Are they all DWP? Uh, we have estimates of up to about 80 jobs in the private sector. Okay. So up to 80 jobs. So when, when it says low as 50 positions, is yes. uh, are the 80 on top of those? Or? Um, 
or does that include the private sector ones? And then 50 it looks as though that includes um, so about a third private sector, two thirds public sector, um, from the low end to the high end. I apologize, I don't have more okay. specifics for you. Okay. Well, when we have those a little bit more refined, I'd love to, to hear and, and uh, get some more detail on that. Great. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Any, any questions on one on the general update? Okay. We, uh, we moved Mr. Parks uh, numbers two and five on uh, consent. Um, so I was going to move to three, four, and six. Is that right? You have a question on two? I just have a, a quick question on two. Okay. Is, is staff here is still here on number two? Mr. Parks had a quick question. I see. Why don't we reopen that briefly? It was five. And then it was five, yeah. I just had a quick question on looking at the uh, this is totally 100% reimbursable yes is, is that include the uh, cost of maintenance and the administrative is also reimbursable no just the cost of the capital the capital yes so do we have a figure on what the maintenance and uh, administrative might run because that's going to be absorbed in what uh, in the uh, prop, we don't get it reimbursed, so is it in Prop A or is it in the R money? It's Prop A. It's part of our budget for Commuter Express. It's a replacement of an existing bus, so there's no additional incremental costs. Okay, so, so we would absorb that in Prop A? Yes. Okay, now we're going to be dealing with Prop A very soon. Late Monday. Yeah, and that's where we're saying it's about a $30 million shortfall. Uh, okay. Looking about $23 million next year, yes. Okay, so this is all incorporated in yes uh, in the sense even with the shortfall yes okay that's all thank you okay thank you we'll uh, move the report on number two again if we can go to number three Item number three, uh, the report before you is the CAO report relative to federal funding of city ARRA grant administrative costs and related actions good morning Good morning, I'm Yutan from the CAO. As already mentioned by the CLA, our report pretty much asks for um, authority to allocate 0.5% of direct ARA grant funding to um, the administration of the ARA program in the CAO's office as well as in the controller's office. Okay. Um, so this is uh, for the um, grants management which CAO is doing and has uh, expended some money but has not had any allocations to do and we, we appreciate and are sympathetic to that these grants have an unprecedented amount of oversight requirements and uh, and yet no allocation specifically for that let me um, let me ask you a couple things has CEO staff spoken to departments that are receiving any of the R grants that may need to reserve um, um, a half of a percent of their uh, grants for oversight purposes and if so, is there any impact anticipated on existing grants, which are already obligated, if we do that? We have spoken to a few of the departments. We know that there is an impact. Uh, what our goal was, if you know, as the program progressed, we know that there will be some savings from those uh, different projects. So what we will do is we will directly bill, and then the departments will have, rather than reprogramming the savings, will have to pay the invoices that we bill them first before they can reprogram them. So you'll, you'll bill them internally from CAO over to the departments, and then yes. get the reimbursements that way. Okay. All right. Any questions on this? Yeah, I just want to make sure that uh, when we say administrative costs, that this is the total, that we're not absorbing it in other little small pockets to where we find out later that it impacted the operational effectiveness. So this, this is per se the only city's administrative costs that we're taking off the top. When you Okay, so this would be for our staff, which consists okay. of pretty much two and a half FTEs and one person from the controller's okay. office. So what's going to happen is rather than billing them through the cap rate, we're going to directly bill the, those different grants. But, but you're going to take the workload as best you can off of departments. Yes. So we should not expect departments to be adding administrative costs once they get the funds. I'm hoping not to. I mean, we're already doing the work right now in terms of oversight management and reviewing okay. all of the reporting to the OMB. Okay. So, thank you. Okay. 
Um, and my understanding is we have to read the recommendations into the record. For the, is it this one? On three? Mm -hmm. uh, on five? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and just move the CAO report on this and go to the next item. Thank you. Next item is a motion relative to the reprogramming of two million from the Clean Tech Manufacturing Center and Crown Coach Industrial Site Expansion Projects to the Build Your Dreams Building Rehabilitation Project and related actions. For this particular item, there is a CEO report that uh, with recommendations that will be read onto the record, oh, this okay. and this item is scheduled for council consideration today. So, Build Your Dreams for the uninitiated or folks who missed the uh, press conference. What is Build Your Dreams? Steve Andrews, Mayor's Office. Uh, Build Your Dreams is a major uh, Chinese company, one of the largest um, companies in the world in terms of high technology, battery technology. They're an innovator in solar uses. And most importantly for this particular use, they're a maker of electric cars. And they've determined that Los Angeles will be their North American headquarters. We're very pleased to have them here. Uh, they have a workforce of about 150,000 uh, worldwide. Started out 15 years ago as a lone factory producing rechargeable batteries. And now they're a very prominent player in these high technology fields. Uh, we think this starts to position Los Angeles as a place where these, this sector of the economy can find a, a happy home. And we expect to grow these different companies over time. Okay. Um, can I go straight into some questions? Or do you have anything you'd like to say? Okay. Um, so the, I, I'm extremely supportive of this, obviously. This is the sort of, uh, of um, economic investment which makes a lot of sense for Angelinos and for our environment. Um, as a long-time electric car driver myself, I'm ecstatic to have a, a company um, basing its North uh, American headquarters here, and they've proven themselves um, in battery technology as well. A um, couple things I'd like to ask about. One. Um, this is CDBG R money, so this is Community Development Block Grant from the Reinvestment Act money. Um, have we reprogrammed any of that money before this? This is the first time we're reprogramming any of that money. For the CDBG R, right? Yeah. Uh, Trina Unsicker, Office of the CAO. To my knowledge, there's been one uh, reprogramming, and that occurred in conjunction with the adoption of the 34th Program Year Comp Plan budget, which is typically CDBG and some other sources, not usually CDBGR. Do you know what that reprogramming was, by any chance? Not specifically. I'm sorry, I don't have that information in front of me. But I do know that it was made by amendment. It wasn't made within the report. So that amendment occurred in one of the committees that traveled through and then it was adopted by the mayor and council. Okay. We could have just a report back on, on what that was. Sure. And my understanding is our CDBG uh, account has a deficit for this year. So how, how do we, I know we run a balance so we can, you know, it's not a hard and fast number um, of what we carry over, but are there projects that are, not moving. I mean, I know what this is being reprogrammed from, but when we have a deficit already, how is the rest of that deficit being closed? Well, one of the recommendations in conjunction with the adoption of the 36th uh, Program Year Comp Plan was in the event that the entitlement amount comes back less than anticipated, there's an instruction that CDD report back on strategies to deal with that deficit. Um, so in conjunction with that recommendation, that, that would be the appropriate option. So we're kind of borrowing on ex ex expected funds and assuming some of the projects will not move within the, I mean, that happens commonly, well, the savings. But. Right. There's a couple of ways you could go. One is that you could make some program cuts. The other is that you might be able to identify some savings, and that might shore up the potential deficit. I just want to make sure we don't find ourselves on a point where we're promising different things and the money isn't there, and HUD um, points that out, that we were kind of extending money that we didn't have. So do you feel confident about that? What is it? I heard it's like uh, $4 million, about $3.8 million right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. Are we, do you feel confident that that gap is uh, not insurmountable? I feel confident that we will identify some strategies where we can find ways that we can reduce spending or identify savings and that we can uh, bring forward some recommendations relative to those options and um, there can be a decision made from there uh, before mayor and council. Okay. Uh, just eyes wide open for us then too, that for other council members, I mean, those may be projects that are then recommended to be slowed down, not to be done, to, um, I, I think having chaired the committee, usually it's that there's things that aren't moving anyway, but um, I want us to be clear about that uh, as well. And the um, last thing, 
what it, what do we estimate the jobs created to be on this? I've heard different numbers, as high as a thousand, other times fifty to one hundred and fifty. We expect someplace between 50 and 100 within the next year, probably 150 jobs within the next couple of years. Beyond that, I think it has to do with how well this company does in terms of their North American marketing and how their products are accepted in the in Those are market. the direct jobs of their headquarters as opposed yes. to any of the franchisees if they started to these sell are the, and things. These are the direct jobs that we expect to be right here in Los Angeles on South Figueroa. Okay. All right. Mr. Parks? Let me, let me ask uh, one thing is unclear. Do we have a commitment from the company as how long they'll be here? Is that part of the deal? Yes, they are negotiating a 10-year lease with a landlord on a facility on South Figueroa. And okay. that's our expectation is that they're here to stay. Okay. And then when will we find out whether it's, uh, this is eligible uh, via CDD? Is that something that will be momentary or will these funds move? prior to that uh, evaluation? The, uh, the, the actions of, of uh, the committee and council direct the community development department to make those determinations just as they do with all the other con plan no, items. I know, but I'm saying is that does this money move before you get that certification? No, no, they certainly don't. I know the, the community development department must negotiate and execute a contract in the context of all the eligibility and the other okay, so, federal so that, regulations. So that recommendation, what is it, uh, for? Basically, uh, on the CAO's report, that, that, that has to occur first. Um, right. The recommendation anticipates that the department would have a negotiation and simultaneously review the eligibility okay. of the project. Now, on the two projects that the money is being reallocated, are they now uh, dead projects or are they just, they say suspended, but are there commitments that uh, they'll be refunded at some time or are they just off the board? The, the funds are being reprogrammed from the same site, commonly called the Crown Coach site. It was renamed in, in the, uh, between the consolidated plan and the CDBGR. It carries two different names, but they are, they're both meeting the Crown Coach site. They've heard the expansion of that site from approximately a 20-acre industrial site to about a 30-acre site. Uh, although we think that's an important long-term strategy for the, for the expansion of that site, everybody that we've been negotiating with uh, can fit within that site now, so we think that we have a higher priority here. And, uh, and that those funds can be deferred or suspended and evaluated at a later time. So the mayor's office is, is happy to think that BYD is the place we need to move now and bring back the Crown okay. Coach site at a later time. Okay. I understand. I just want to make sure they were clear. What's the commitment made? Is it the commitment to reallocate the funds later or does it stop the project or they just decided not to move forward on the expansion? I just want to get a, a, a yes. firm commitment of what, what was our commitment of the, where we're taking the money from. The, the funds we're reprogramming would have been part of a long-term strategy. They weren't enough to actually do the complete expansion anyway. So the, prod, the site is currently at a 20 acres available, clean, cleared, uh, vacant, and there's no diminution of the commitment to be able to build on that site. It's just that it won't be as large as it might have been. Okay. So the, the expectation is maybe, what, in the 37th or 38th year we'll be revisiting our repaying this reallocation? I, I would say it would be revisited, but there's no commitment that it would necessarily be repaid or, or added to those years. Okay, so there's no... I think that would be evaluated in the next con plan if there is a request for block grant money. Okay. But that's if, if it's ready to go? It, that site is ready to go now. Okay. All right. And then let me ask also, uh, what was the rationale to... Because uh, generally we reprogram at mid-year or at some formal process. What was the rationale to move this outside of the uh, regular reprogramming? Well, the CDBG uh, fund has, a, I guess, a longer history on its process, and typically reprogramming is done in a separate mid-year action, or it could be, as in the case of the 36th program year, the current year, um, reprogramming savings were evaluated at the same time that the budget was put together. CDBGR, to my knowledge, doesn't have such a precedent, but what would be envisioned is something where similarly staff could make recommendations, and then it could be evaluated um, as a fund um, as a whole. Okay. So we but we're taking money from both pots still, right? Well, we'd be looking at all I mean, of the projects. we're taking money from R and right. Block Grant. 
That's so, correct. So the, what was the rationale on the, on the regular block grant to go outside of the... Well, it is, it's an unusual situation. And so what our office is indicating is that uh, this is a policy decision and not something where we would typically make a specific recommendation without looking at the entirety of the two budgets. But given that this is a priority project, it's clear. And if the mayor and council ought to make this their highest priority, um, and if timeliness is an issue, then this may be the time to implement uh, uh, the reprogramming. And that being the case, we've provided some recommendations to follow if mayor and council make that decision. Okay. And then who has actually vetted the project? Is it CRA? Is it uh, the... Uh CAO, the CLA, who's actually gone and vetted the project? Is it uh, to come to this point? The Mayor's Office of uh, Economic and Business Policy led the recruitment effort to bring this headquarters to Los Angeles. Uh, we have consulted with both the Community Development Department and the Redevelopment Agency as to those aspects that they can assist on. Uh, we, the timing on this project, there was a lot of competition from other cities that could have moved faster than this even. We're trying to get this company here and they want to open up this fall. So to go through the process, that's one of the reasons why we felt that the priority needed to be dealt with now uh, to, to close the deal in effect to get them to commit to Los Angeles. If we find these funds are ineligible, what's the backup plan? Uh, at, at the moment, we do not have a backup plan. We do feel the funds are eligible for this use. And, and it will take about 30 days to, to validate that? I don't want to speak for the Community Development Department, but it would, uh, I suspect it would take considerably less than that. Okay. Uh, this would be their, they would go through their typical process of, um, of documenting that. Okay, that's all right. Um, no further questions on this one, then let's go ahead and read the recommendations uh, into the record, if you'd like to. Okay. Um, I hope you'll bear with me. There's five recommendations. I'm sorry. One thing, I, and I, again, I, what I know about the project, it seems like if it's going to do what it says, a good project, I just want to make sure there's precautions about protecting the general fund, that we're not doing something that later we find that it impacts the general fund, that it's within the we're actually dealing with in the block grant or funds outside the general fund. And I, I can understand that. Okay. Um, at the moment, um, there are about $400,000 in needs relative to public right-of-ways, um, landscaping, sidewalk maintenance, um, a number of other issues for which there isn't a specific identified source. But one of the recommendations that we've um, included is to request for, among other things, CDD to report back on the initial and the ongoing maintenance costs of those projects or those aspects of the project um, so that we can identify a source of funds that may not impact the general fund. Yeah, they do. Um, okay, let's go ahead and re read those recommendations then. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's a preface before the five recommendations. I'll read that for the record. Reprogramming grant funding typically is done when reviewing the condition of the overall grant and balancing the priorities awaiting funding consideration. If the council, subject to the approval of the mayor, opt to grant highest priority to the Build Your Dreams project, the following recommendations will facilitate transfer of funds. Number one. Authorize the general manager of the community development department or designee to reprogram $1 million in community development block grant American Recovery and Reinvestment Act funds in the Clean Tech Manufacturing Center line item and $1 million in community development block grant funds from the Crown Coach Industrial Site Expansion line item to new line item within CDBG and CDBGR titled Build Your Dreams, Building Rehabilitation for a total of $2 million dollars available to BYD, $1 million in CDBG funds and $1 million in CDBGR funds, subject to approval by the CDD as to grant funding eligibility and final verification of funding availability. Number two, authorize the general manager, CDD or designee, to negotiate contracts and interdepartmental agreements with the grant recipients identified by CDD in an amount not to exceed $2 million for rehabilitation and other eligible activities pursuant to recommendations Recommendation number one, subject to A, the review and approval of the Public Works Bureau of Contract Administration, B, 
review and approval of the city attorney as to form, and C, project approval relative to eligibility. Number three, authorize the general manager, CDD, or designee, to amend the necessary housing and community action plans or plans to reflect the reprogramming actions. Number four, direct the CDD to report back on the status of the BYD rehabilitation and include its project budget and schedule, any additional sources of funding required for both initial and ongoing maintenance costs of the BYD project, and eligibility status within 30 days. And finally, five, authorize the general manager of CDD or designee to prepare controller's instructions and or make any technical adjustments that may be required and are consistent with this action, subject to the approval of the city administrative officer and authorize the controller to implement these instructions. Excuse, excuse me. And no? um, Mr. Wesson uh, has amendment on number two to add and execute. Did you have that in the instruction number two? No, um, our intent was to have um, CDD request authorization for execution when they report back within 30 days on the other issues addressed in number four. Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Weston, is that all right? They're, t they're saying they're going to add execute in the report back in 30 days? Is that right? Okay. Okay, cool. Let's, let's keep it that way then. Um, Mr. Chair, yes, sir. the Mayor's Office requests that we do get that authority now so that if CDD does find the project is eligible, all the other conditions are met under the regulations, that they are able to go ahead and execute a contract. It is going to be very difficult to get this project done and this, this company open this fall if they have to come back for getting that authority to execute. But we understand that the Community Development Department would have to, to vet and verify all aspects of this. But if they do, uh, we'd like them to have the authority to execute the contract. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we add the language and then have the report? We can always pull it back. That's, that may be. Is there, any, is there any hesitation you have in terms of adding the execution? If that's in line with the policy decision the council wants to make, then okay. we'll certainly make that okay. something that you can consider. Okay. We can, we can always pull that back. We'll, we'll educate ourselves in the meantime, but just in case it slows things up, we'll, we'll add that then without objection, and then we'll get the report in those 30 days on it to make sure. Okay? Uh, if there's no objection, okay, we'll move that forward. Thank you. And make sure, Mr. Parks? Yeah, I just want to make sure that when we get the report back that you address that general fund impact issue. Okay, then um, we may want to amend recommendation number four um, to okay. include that because that would be a CDD report back. Okay. So we'll, we'll have them um, also address any potential impacts to the general fund. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. If we can go to uh, item six and then we're going to come back if we have time and um, look at number two again. Mr. Rosendahl had a question about that, but let's go to number six. Item six is a CAO report relative to acceptance of the balance of the $37,017,900 in energy efficiency and conservation block grant funds made available to the city through the ARRA and various program adjustments, including the transfer of program and financial administration for the grant to the Department of Water and Power. For folks who are watching, and, and that might have been a confusing sentence, again, we're talking about our uh, uh, stimulus funds here. In particular, this is something on energy efficiency for green jobs and to help um, promote the environment here in Los Angeles through uh, promoting green jobs, making our buildings more energy efficient, um, including our homes as well as businesses, and uh, hiring folks here locally to be able to do that. So I just want to translate that into plain English since we get uh, used to all these acronyms. And with that, I'd be happy to hear a report. Good morning. I'm Beth Gines representing the Environmental Affairs Department. We're here to uh, request the authority to accept the balance of the city's 37 million energy efficiency and conservation block grant funds and also to begin implementing the associated programs. We are also requesting adjustments to the programs that the City Council approved in November of 2009, including transferring the administrative overhead and the primary contact with the Department of Energy to the, uh, de the, to the other departments. Um, because of EAV's consolidation, it's um, necessary to move these programs to uh, additional departments. 
As a bit of background, USDOE made available a direct allocation of $37 million to the City of Los Angeles. The City made an initial request for $250,000 to develop an energy efficiency and conservation strategy and to prepare a proposed expenditure plan for the funding. The funding was received in July of 2009. EAD and the partner departments held eight public outreach meetings to discuss programs and to solicit public input. The strategy and the expenditure plan were approved by the Council and submitted to the Department of Energy in November of 2009. DOE has now approved the strategy and expenditure plan and there is a great deal of attention being focused on the City of Los Angeles by Department of Energy and other federal agencies. The City's award is the second largest in the country and there is a strong desire to see that successful programs roll out quickly, that we reduce energy use and we create and retain green jobs through this funding. We also hope to share our success stories across the country. The Department of Energy has released target dates for all local government recipients for obligating and expending funds. They are coming up soon. We have submitted a revised timeline for obligating funds, but are hoping to meet the target date of expending 20% of the funding by September 30th of this year. We are recommending that the financial administration of the grant and the primary contact with DOE be transferred to the Department of Water and Power. The energy efficiency unit of the Department of Water and Power would be a good fit for this energy efficiency program and will provide some additional tech expertise and resources to the program. We have worked very closely with the Mayor's Office, with the CAO and the Controller on this transfer and the transfer of the financial lead and have worked out the processing, reporting and audit procedures. Department of Water and Power's financial office has offered to act as the, the fiscal administrator of the grant without charging grant administrative fees to other departments. This will save over $326,000 that then can be put back into the program budgets. The financial administration of the grant involves receiving and reviewing requests for payment, drawing down funds from the city's federal account, and transferring those funds to the appropriate departments to pay for goods and services. I want to clarify this process because in our briefings there was a bit of misunderstanding. This grant is a reimbursable grant. After the costs are incurred by the city departments, the city can request payment. The funds are held in a federal account and will not be transferred to any city accounts in advance of the request for payment. The Department of Energy has been very clear that they do not want recipients to draw down the money and accrue interest on the federal funds. We are also recommending that based on a request from the Housing Department that the Foreclosed Properties Retrofit Neighborhood Stabilization Program be eliminated as sufficient funds are available from other sources and that the $2 million that was designated for this program be moved to the Multifamily Affordable Housing Retrofit Financing Program, which is also led by the Housing Department. We recommend transferring the lead responsibilities for the programs that were to be led by the Environmental Affairs Department as indicated on page two of the CAO's report on this item. No other funding changes are recommended. Because the City Council, the Mayor, and the Department of Energy have approved the proposed program areas, we do not anticipate any additional changes. These programs, uh, excuse me, these funds must be expended by July 26, 2012, which is a very short time from now. The report also contains instructions related to establishing the accounts and the appropriations to enable the implementation of the 14 different programs. The program areas are going to be led by eight different departments and are described in the report from EAD and they also in and they include energy efficiency retrofit programs, workforce development, financial incentives for energy efficiency retrofits, energy efficiency uh, goods movement, development and implementation of strategies, research to further energy efficiency and to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. There is also an outreach and education program. We anticipate a total of approximately 250 direct jobs to be created or retained through these programs. Of the 250, approximately 23 jobs will be city employee jobs and and the remaining 227 jobs will be private sector jobs. In addition, about 700 jobs will be leveraged by the funding. We have representatives of all the partner departments here this morning to respond to any questions you may have on the individual programs. Thank you. Okay.
a couple questions. So just clarifying the role the DWP plays, um, you, that would be a clearinghouse for the money, no way to hold up the money or reprogram the money or anything like that. It's, it becomes the new clearinghouse for the dispersion of that money or dispersing. Yes. Okay. And um, once the program goes to DWP, will council and the city be able to monitor and make sure the programs are occurring as we intended? Is there any change in terms of oversight because of the, the proprietary nature of DWP? Good question, Hardis and DWP. We anticipate no changes in that. Uh, in the report from the Environmental Affairs Department, uh, one of the recommendations is to begin reporting uh, at six-month intervals. Uh, the program management staff would come and coordinate with all of the lead departments to bring that information to you on the status of programs and the status of the fund drawdowns. We can come more often if you'd okay. like. No, 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 I think every 30 days would be great to, on the progress. This is $37 million. It's a big chunk, and I think many of us have been uh, very enthused and, and active in working on the design of some of these programs. So I think every 30 days it would be great to have DWP report back in writing and testifying in front of the committee. Um, and. Uh, and making sure, if we can just make sure the city attorney can let us know if there's any legal issues with um, having the department directly report to council. There shouldn't be, but I just want to make sure there's no charter issues there. And then um, what is the interaction, the working group kind of that we have with mayor, council, departments that had you know big part in terms of crafting the program. Once these programs and administration go to DWP, is that group intended to stay together um, in terms yes. of working for mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Uh, those are the questions I have. Um, Mr. Roosevelt? Yeah, this is one of the best moments, uh, frankly, uh, is this. And we held committee meetings on it. We did outreach meetings in my community. I went to a couple of them. But 37, you know, it's a lot of money, okay? And it's a good, it's a good use of the money. Uh, my biggest question is really going to be the, D, the DOE getting it back to them and what you've got to get back to them and the time frame on that so the money can be released. Uh, when, when you look at the, the, the amount of money here, $37 um, million, dollars, you, you really have a chance to make a difference. So how are we going to get, get it together to go to BOE back in D.C., get the approval, and then, most importantly for me, get the word out to people and community on how they can take advantage of this opportunity? Okay. Well, we have uh, received approval from the Department of Energy for the 14 program areas that are before you today. Um, and they are very anxious for us to get going. We, um, our program management team has a weekly uh, telephone conference call with the Department of Energy project officer uh, to report in on the status of development of all of these programs. Uh, we're pleased to note that at least three or four of them are ready to go as soon as we receive council authority to officially accept the funding. Uh, one of the earliest programs that we'll be taking off is the Green Workforce Development Program that the Community Development Department is leading. Um, so we are keeping in touch with them closely. We have monthly reports due to the Department of Energy and their online reporting system. We're also working with the CAO's office on the eCivis reporting program. So we'll have all of our uh, lead departments coordinating on the quarterly required reports to the federal government on jobs creation and funds management, uh, as well as our monthly and quarterly reports on the program status. Okay, department. that's all good. But let me just is, is single out one, one area in my district at the moment, Mar Vista for instance. Mar Vista has done a lot of uh, um, solar on the roofs. Um, 80 homes have already done it. Another group are doing it. 80 homes have taken their backyards, got rid of all the green grass, God bless grass, but they put in uh, environmentally sensitive uh, vegetation and they look beautiful. We did a tour of them the other day. Um, Sherry Akers, uh, the lady I'm honoring with that bouquet of flowers today as a pioneer, has set up many different kinds of environmental things. A sustainability workshop where people took a class to learn how they can become become more energy efficient. In fact, she has a, a sheet where 15% things we can do ourselves, simple things, uh, will cut back on our energy usage. And so there's a lot of tremendous support. That's just one example. I have it throughout the district, but Mar Vista is, is what I'm highlighting to you right now because they've come to me. I've had my roof looked at three different ways to see what I should do. And I'm going to make a decision and go solar. I think everybody who has a flat roof should go solar and get off of this grid and pollution and, and use the, the sun that the good Lord gave us here, right? So how do those neighborhood councils or those community groups 
and I have them in the Palisades in, in Venice and Westchester and Palms, throughout you know, the, the whole area. Um, how do they get at it so that they can somehow get into it? Let me um, answer that question. We're now past the mayor's office. Yeah. There are two programs within the um, energy efficiency block grant that could address that. And one of them is the AB811 model, which is a homeowner, a, is a property tax model mm -hmm. where you would uh, borrow money and you would pay it back through your property taxes as as you do your energy efficiency for any property owner, including um, both commercial and residential. The, the, the exciting piece on this uh, energy block grant is that we'll, we'll be rolling out a small grants program, two small grants programs, in, in, in total of about $3.5 million, $50,000 per grant per awardee would go for outreach and education on energy efficiency, and then we set aside $100,000 per grant for those who want to do actual efficiency work on their nonprofit facility. We had a meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago with a number of key environmental organizations to help us lay out what types of what types of projects and types of scope of a grant would look like, and we'll be ready to roll that out as soon as the um, grants are approved or the process is approved here in council. So th those are ready to go out into the communities. And how will you link that to, say, neighborhood councils and homeowner groups we would, and other communities? We would do the, these grantees for the small grants. They're for nonprofits and community organizations who have nonprofit status. Right. And so we would certainly go out and do outreach for the availability of these grants, they would apply. And we would that, that's the best that we, we would do is to make sure that they know that these grants are, are available. On the AB811 model, um, we're waiting for the county to establish their model, which is going to be coming up in the next few months since they're still working on theirs. And there'll be extensive outreach. We're, we put aside a million dollars in this particular grant program for outreach on AB811. So we would be bringing on folks to do outreach and to sign up for the program. Okay, now you mentioned earlier that there'd be 23 city jobs, 227 private sector jobs, and then the overflow would be another 700 leveraged jobs. How can someone get into an opportunity to get one of those jobs? Um, Craig Trandy, UWP. Uh, each program area within 14 areas we're discussing will have its own uh, sort of job pathway and we'll be uh, coordinating those together so hopefully the sort of the training parts of the program will be feeding into the placement areas of the program. We'll be working closely with CDD to do that. Um, also partnerships with the community college district and their training programs, LA County and their training programs as well. Okay. When you get moving on that, give us a report back on a, on a regular basis about the job opportunities. I got to tell you, in my role today, I get more phone calls and people on the street looking for work than obviously ever in my history on this planet. Uh, and it's a very, very um, attractive and appealing. Uh, the second part of that question is, do, do these jobs go away once we spend the money, or do we somehow figure out how to keep those 227 private sector jobs going? The 700 over and the 23. Well, one of the goals of DOE was to for cities to create sustainable programs and mechanisms to continue this beyond the block grant period. So a number of the programs are designed to be sustained beyond through a mechanism like the financing program, for example. Those, those funds will revolve so that as they revolve, jobs will be kept in, in that sense. Other programs may have ways of banking the energy savings and creating further jobs. So certain of them will, will sustain beyond. We're also very hopeful that there may be a future round of block grant funding and that our performance and our expeditious uh, you know, use of this funding will help inform that round and that they will, DOE will look kindly upon us to, to, to provide. Well, I hope process. so because this is, this is a no-brainer and, and it's so beautiful. And does DWP take the overall responsibility for this? Yes, we do. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, congratulations for making this happen. This is a great way to start our Friday to know that that kind of money is coming in to help us. Thank you. Yeah, I just have a couple of questions. With the transfer going on and we're dealing with this grant, these this opportunity would be all within existing resources and no new positions? Yes. Okay. And then the other issues, could you kind of briefly, and it kind of carries over Mr. Garcetti's question, give us a clear idea on how the drawdowns will occur, being that several departments will be making them, but yet DWP is the 
basically uh, is the, uh, I guess, warehouse for the money? How does that actually hurt, uh, work, and then how does the reimbursements work? We have a um, financial officer from the Department of Water and Power who can address that. Good morning, Ann Santilli, DWP. Basically, the way we see it is the DOE required us to uh, apply as one city. So what we would do is when a department feels they've met all the milestones, they would send their request for drawdown, because this is a reimbursement, to Ms. Hardison to make sure they met all the requirements, and they'd also tell us the fund they want the money in. Once it's approved, the department would draw down the money to one account, and once the city controller confirms that we've received it, we would send the money to the account specified by that department within one to two business days. So, and what we're doing right now is working with our auditors to make sure that they understand our system and make sure that it, it meets all the audit requirements. Do, do we have any idea on their return on the reimbursements? Is that 30 days, 15 days, or do we have any idea? Within 25 days. 25 days. Okay. Let me ask also, who in this array of people are going to be responsible for ensuring we meet our spending deadlines overall? Could we get where you said it, to 12, 2012? Yeah. Well, um, Ms. Hardison will be monitoring that, and then accounting will be I mean, for the information. Monitoring. DWP. Who's, who's going to be responsible? DWP. DWP is responsible. And, and the mayor's office will be assisting. Okay. So the DWP is the one we go to and make sure that $37 million gets spent yes. by 2012 and that it's eligible and we get our reimbursements. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Parks. There are no other questions. Let's go ahead uh, on item number six, then. We'll go ahead and uh, move the CAO report uh, with the uh, verbal amendment that I mentioned about the reports back uh, every 30 days. So for the record, you're having a report back uh, in 30 days on the job opportunities as well as the general report back. Yeah, I'm sorry, and the other amendment as well. Okay, yes, both of those. Okay. Thank, thank you all. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Rosen, I wanted to reopen number two as well. I don't know if staff is still here on number two. I, I think that um, they can do it. Mr. Okay. We can have the, the CAO and the... Uh, yeah. Jim Clark and a couple of others up there. Oh, no, we've got staff here. Very, very, very you guys stuck around. That was smart. Mr. Rosenau? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's too good for me not to get a chance to, to appreciate what you've done. Um, what this does is allow us to, to really get the clean vehicle out there. Uh, explain what this, what this grant does, the $8 million. Yes, uh, Jim Lefty with the Department of Transportation. It's a grant for 17 replacement commuter express buses. We have a fleet of about 100 commuter express buses that are diesel powered that were bought in the mid 80s and early 90s that are due for replacement. So we've been very aggressive in going after federal funding wherever possible to help pay for these replacement buses and we were successful with this uh, our grant to replace 17 of those buses with new compressed natural gas buses. And how many buses still remaining that, that are the big heavy polluters, diesel? Um, we have about 83 left and we're in the process of replacing the entire diesel powered fleet. Perfect. And have you, I mean just for my information, uh, LAUSD, the school system has the filthiest buses. I mean, it's a disaster. You get behind one of those buses, that stuff comes at you and, and is particulate uh, p particles and cancer driven. Are they getting grants too to clean up their buses? I've seen where they're getting new CNG and propane powered buses, so I think they're moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, with this grant of $8 million and we get those number of buses going, are you hopeful there will be more money coming in the stimulus to do more replacement of buses? Absolutely. We're continually looking for new opportunities. Uh, and when will you get this money and how quickly will you be able to get those buses? We, up? we get federal money for, through MTA as well as grant applications we apply for. So every, every year we come up with a significant number of amount of grant funding from federal sources. That's great. And I'd like you to just give us a, a report back in a month to the Transportation Committee and just continue to give us that good news. It's very hopeful and very excited. And I appreciate the work you did to get us to this point right now. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll continue that action on number two. And I think all of those are now full committee votes. So with that, this uh, meeting of the Ad Hoc Committee on uh, Economic Recovery and Reinvestment is adjourned. We'll start our council meeting uh, in about five minutes. Thank you all for your patience.
you are prescribed drugs from more than one health care provider, it is critically important to ensure that they all know about all the drugs you take, including over-the-counter drugs and herbal supplements. And that's today's Senior Stat Shot. The Los Angeles Department of Aging produces this program with...